this time on Bat Squad. This is a vampire bat. Most people think vampire bats are these huge, scary animals. The bat scout cookies are insect flavored cookies. It was love at first catch. This is just amazing. Hey, Bat friends. I'm Cammie, and I'm your Bat Squad host. So what do you think about bats? You may think they're really scary. You may think they're really adorable and cute and cuddly. Or you may just want to learn more about them, like me. I always want to learn more about any animal. Let's get to know some Bat Squad members who can tell us all about bats. Today we'll meet Madison, Alexis, and Rachel. Madison is going to tell us all about the importance of bats. I'm listening. Hi, I'm Madison Myas. I'm 14 years old and I'm from Troy, Michigan. I first got interested in bats when I was about three years old and Aww. I've basically been interested my entire life because both my parents were scientists and I grew up in a household where they were really interested in bats and teaching me about it all my life. Right in here we have the mail cage and these are where all our mail bats are. Yeah, they're just eating. So they're eating fruit right over there. See these like fruits hanging in that rope? That's called enrichment and that's just to help them um, to help them get accustomed to where they live. Well, bats are the only mammals that can really fly. Other mammals, like the flying squirrels and sugar gliders, they don't actually fly, they just glide, and bats can fly for long periods of time. Some of the great things about bats are that they eat more than thousands of insects every night, and this saves farmers millions of dollars every year on pest control. And also, this makes our food healthier for us and also us healthier by using less pesticides. So bats disperse seeds in the rainforest and what they do is after they eat the fruit when they're flying over the rainforest, they disperse the seeds in their poop and this um, spreads the tree seeds all over. What bats do to pollinate is when they find a plant that they want to drink the nectar from, they go up to the flower and start to drink the nectar. And since they have longer snouts, the pollen from the um, flower actually gets on their snouts. And when they fly off to go to the next flower, they land and the pollen rubs off on that flower. And this is how plants reproduce. Bats pollinate many plants and trees, such as guava, banana, and agave. The only bats that live here in North America are insect-eating bats, and we only have two pollinating bats. But the big fruit bats, they live in the tropical and subtropical regions. This is a vampire bat. Most people think vampire bats are these huge, scary animals, but really, this bat's just a cute, small little bat. And the vampire bats live in Central and South America and they don't live in North America, and these bats um, drink blood. So what they do is when they find a cow, they land on the cow, take a little bite, and they actually have something in their saliva which lets the blood keep flowing. And instead of sucking blood, which most people think, they actually just lap it up with their tongue, and right after, they just fly away. The cow is completely fine. It doesn't turn into a vampire cow or anything. It's just completely good. Vampire bats are actually really social animals. They have their own families and colonies, and they actually know all the bats in there. And um, when one bat is actually sick and can't leave the cave, or they just, for some reason, they didn't get food that night, one bat will actually take um, the blood that it got before from a cow and actually feed the other bat to keep it healthy. This is the vampire bat's wing, and it's like all the bat's wings. And basically you can see right there is the thumb of the bat. And you can see the bat's elbow right here, just like we have. And also the bat's four, four fingers on the wing. A lot of people don't know that there's bats always around them and everywhere, in your neighborhood, outside your house.
every night they're eating thousands of mosquitoes and they're always flying around. If you had a bat detector, you'd be able to hear bats everywhere and hear their echolocation. Well, this is a big brown bat and they are one of the most common bats in North America. And this is the bat that you would most likely find outside in your backyard. So this is the echolocation meter and you can hear those little clicking noises are the bat echolocation. Thanks Madison. Wow, can you imagine working with real life bats like Madison does? Oh, it must be so much fun looking at cute, cuddly bats. Let's meet another Bat Squad member who's doing her own research on bats in the field. Hi everyone, my name is Alexis. I'm 14 and I live in Tennessee. I have earned a very lovely nickname. My nickname is Bat Girl, and it has stuck with me ever since third grade. I've been working with bats for seven summers now. I first got excited about bats when I was in third grade, and I went out and I netted with Dr. Joy. So the next thing we're gonna do is put the net on. And I caught one, I just, it was uh, love at first catch. Okay, now Alexis, what I want you to do is try to pull the net kind of towards where I was going to go and see if it works. Ooh, I caught that. You're doing good. Keep going. Over the years, I've had various projects. Some have dealt with capturing bats and logging them, and my most recent projects have been dealing with the acoustics or bat echolocations and the activity calls. Echolocation is how bats see with their ears. Not necessarily bats are blind, but they don't really use their eyesight in the darkness. What it is is a high frequency noise that we cannot hear. They use it to detect the size, shape, and texture of a tree or a moth to see if it's moving or it's standing still. When they find something that's moving, it's most likely food, so they hone in on it and they go for it and try to eat it. All of my projects have been mainly focused on the decrease and population results of white nose syndrome. The connection of the white nose syndrome and the acoustics is you see the activity and if it's increasing or decreasing in the populations of bats. Well, I wanted to put up a bat detector to detect bat chat calls to use there's an increase or decrease in bat populations. To do that, you have to get and apply for a permit for the Great Smoky Mountains National Park which I have held for the last three years. A bat detector is a recording device used to pick up bat chats. Bat chats are the high frequency noises that are called echolocations. The one I have in my hand is an active bat detector. You can go around at night and walk and hear the bat frequencies. We cannot hear bat frequencies because it is above our hearing range. With this one, you can go out and you can actually hear them right away and turn it on. I love that. Thanks, Alexis. That was so much fun, especially the part where you talked about echolocation. I mean, imagine how cool it would be to just move around in the dark like the bats do. You wouldn't even have to worry about bumping into anything like this table. Oh, and great job on your research, by the way. And if research isn't such a thing, then there are tons of other ways you can help bats. Rachel is going to tell us all about how much she loves bats and how much she can help from right at home. I am Rachel, and I'm 14 now. I've liked bats as long as I can remember. 
I like bats because they eat bugs and mosquitoes are pesky little things <laughs> and the flies that are probably in the shot. They get rid of them for me. <laughs> I first got into bats when I made a sixth grade project and they were just so tiny that I it got inspired to do a blog for them. I've actually gotten close up with a bat. Um, the first time that I did it, I was actually kind of scared because I knew the bats flew around. I wasn't scared of bats, but I was still scared that it would like chirp and hate me. And I didn't want a bat to hate me because they're just so cute. These guys have fuzzy tails. Mm. So yeah, they're very fluffy. Oh. But very, very fluffy. they didn't hate me that much. So I was happy with that, but it's a once in a lifetime experience um, that all of my friends are jealous of. Cause I come back from the weekend and I'm like, I got to see tricolor bats and you didn't. <laughs> Thanks for showing us that bats are so cute. I can see why you would want to write about them. Adorableness. I didn't know that bats could eat so much things from insects to fruits and even mice. Anyway, I heard one of your blogs was about Bat Scout cookies. How on earth did you come up with that? The Bat Scout cookies, I'm a Girl Scout and I was sick and I didn't really want, I, I couldn't come up with anything to write a blog that day and I really just wanted to go to bed relax and I have the Girl Scout boxing right there so I just kind of took all of the kinds and the Girl Scout list and I just kind of transformed it into creepy curly things. <laughs> We've got the mango munchies which are perfect for fruit bats which are not local to Virginia but they're bite-sized mango cookies dusted with powdered banana and bursting with yummy mango flavor, which it, out of all of these, that's the one that I would pick. If I were forced to eat a bat's cookie, I'd pick that one. Then we've got the bat wings, which are insect flavored cookies. It's disgusting. Insect flavored cookies are delightfully simple and satisfying, not for humans. <laughs> mm -hmm. Crunchy doughs, crisp and crunchy beetle shell cookies, with creamy worm filling, yum. Again, not for human consumption. Caledonia's crisp fruity cookie coated in nectar sprinkled with toasted pollen and striped with dark blossomy coating. Well, if you're into pollen, I'm sure you can eat it. The kind of bats that would eat that were, are pollinating bats. Hangalongs, crispy cookies layered with mealworm butter and covered with a mossy coating. Yum. Big brown bats would like that because they like mealworms. Thin moths, crispy cookies covered with a mothy coating. I am disgusted in myself for coming up with this. Why? <laughs> what have I done? and amazing at the same time. Bats are so cool. I mean, there's the teeny insect eating ones and the vampire bats and the fruit eating bats. Bats are so helpful. I mean, they protect our crops, they start new forests, and they even pollinate plants. Tune in to our next video called Hey Bat, What's Your Habitat? And you can also do this really fun activity called Calculate the Value of Bats. See you next time.